Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for, for participating, for, for being present at the eighth edition of the Latin Startups Conference. This is the second edition we do virtually, and we definitely wanted to share uh, different perspectives of the region. And today we have a panel with three excellent speakers from three different countries in Mercosur. The title of the panel is Mercosur, How Technology is Impacting the Future of the Post-Pandemic Economy. We're very privileged to have um, each of these speakers, each of them representing a different country. We have Mr. Juan uh, Siapesoni, who is Kuti's Vice President of Innovation and co-founder of the Electrical Factory. We have from Brazil, Juan, Mr. Juan is from Uruguay. We have Mr. Marcelo Konig Sarkis, who's from Brazil. He's a founder of Prima IP, and also the past president of the Brazil-Canada Chamber of Commerce based out of Toronto. We have from Argentina, Mr. Marcos Amadeo, who's the founder and CEO of Startup Global. I wanna take a, a, a quick few seconds to have each of them uh, just say hi and welcome to the panel. Mr. Juan, with you first, please, welcome. Welcome everybody and thank you so much for the intro. It's a pleasure to share this panel with Marcelo, Marcos and yourself, Rafael. I think it's a, it's a great, great time. Uh, a lot of things are shifting, a lot of opportunities are popping up and I think it's part of our mission and role in this society to, to push the boundaries forward and, and think in a more holistic way about the next year. So thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you, excellent. Uh, Mr. Marcelo, um, if you have a few words of introduction, welcome. Thank you, Rafael, and thank you, LATAM, for inviting me to this conference. It's a pleasure. <clears throat> when I was last at the conference, I was moderating a panel and uh, so now I put others in the hot seat, but now tonight, I guess I'm in the hot seat. But uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, I look forward to participating. Thank you. No, thank you for supporting us yet another year and definitely your contribution is gonna be very valuable. From Argentina, Mr. Marcos Amadeo, welcome. Hello everybody. Hello, Rafael, Juan, Marcelo. It's amazing to be here uh, to share with you um, our current reality, uh, how we are facing in the best way as we can. And of course that maybe in other times we can be together sitting in the same place in the same city, but this is now what, what happens to, to all of us. So very, I'm very looking forward to hear um, how, how are you doing? And of course, I want to share also uh, my experience here in Argentina. Thank you, Marcos. And this is really exciting. We're connecting the northern part of the hemisphere, Canada, all the way to the, the south, which is uh, the Mercosur, each of us in a different uh, location. So thank you, everyone. Uh, this panel, Mercosur, the region is, has always been in our conference, have always been a big interest, especially to, the, to Canada. And also the other countries in the region always look at the countries in Mercosur to learn from their experience, their technology. So we're really excited to have all of you here with us. Uh, without ado, further ado, we wanted to start the panel, have you guys talk and, and me talk less. Uh, uh, we have three questions we wanted to learn from, uh, from each of them, your perspectives, your experience, and, and learning from what, what's been happening, especially the, over the last few years, uh, the last year, the pandemic. Um, I wanted to begin with Marcelo with the first question. We wanted to understand that this is the second year of the pandemic in our lives and in our countries. Um, from your perspective what what trends have you noticed in brazil for example in regard to people and companies that are adopting new technologies especially during this last year what has stood out as the most significant impact of these changes thank you uh rafael well what i what i've noticed here is it's almost been an overnight shift for e-commerce and also digital transformation of many sectors including customer experience, supply chain, uh, product life cycles. Uh, one of the largest digitization projects triggered by COVID-19 in Brazil was getting citizens into the banking system so the government can give them financial assistance. This is, is, is very, very important and very relevant. Uh, not only the, the banking, but also telemedicine and retail businesses ramping up e-commerce uh, initiatives. We noticed recently that the Inter-American Development Bank has approved a credit line of up to $1 billion to help drive digital transformation efforts in Brazil. These to me are, are the key areas that uh, come to my 
mind and the trends that I've been noticing in in Brazil. Absolutely, Marcel. Th thank you again. Um, and I wanted to, to understand a little bit. Juan ha works with um, uh, entities with several technology there um, in in Uruguay. And what has happened in Uruguay or even in this region that you've you, you've seen um, in the, over the last year, Juan? I, I think that this this pandemic showed us that um, we need to change a little bit the the perspective of the visionary thinking or the visions the the strategy of our companies and you know, as a personal level too. Uh, we've been used to think about strategies in 10 years, 20 years. And now it's more about the transformation and disruption and, and set it up and build strategies one year next to the other, you know, like a short term kind of ideas and, and, and strategies. And uh, I think that's a very important shift for the Uruguayan point of view, because you always think you always need to think about long term execution and strategy. But the fact of being a country that you can prototype, MVP, test solutions in very short term and then implement it worldwide. I think it's something that is perfect for a Uruguayan uh, characteristic as a country, as a society. The most ex uh, perfect example is the one laptop per child program that is actually gave Uruguay a great advantage in terms of educational uh, platform for kids not to be absent for, for studying. And that is something that has been implemented first in Uruguay in the region. And now for us, it's been a huge, huge uh, weapon or tool in order not only to help kids to keep studying, but also to bring technology into the mainstream uh, and all those platforms too. Uh, so I think that's, that's, that's something that um, Uruguay is taking a very good advantage of and starting to pop up a lot of strategies and ideas in order to help others in the region and in the world to test first and then scale. Excellent. Thank you, Juan. Exactly. Uruguay has been has seen as has been seen a lot as a uh, an entry point, uh, uh, adoption to an early adopter of every technology as well. And well, like you said, technology that were, was planned for five years ago and now has to be fast forwarded and, and used now in the digital transformation. Uh, uh, Marcos actually works a lot with digital transformation. Uh, the same question to you, Marcos, what do you think has, is the most significant impact of these changes and what trends have you noticed, especially in, in Argentina? Yeah, well, <clears throat> as, as Juana here in, in Argentina, um, we, um, we have more than 30,000 new schools, public schools connected to internet. So that, that's part of the infrastructure. And then of course the devices uh, became um, I don't know if there are devices, uh, what kind of notebooks or laptops are useful for, for, for the education right now. It depends, the basis is used to change, but the infrastructure, the connectivity now is one of the keys. So on the, on the one like, I think that that uh, became very useful for, for the schools right now, of course, of this reality. On the other hand, everything, everything, digital uh, companies, e-commerce companies, ICP companies became the winners here in Argentina also. Well, everybody knows about Mercado Libre, how the, the, stock, the share of stocks became main, um, main exponential higher. So, I mean, here the, the e-commerce companies, the ICP companies become the winners here. Also, digital transformation, there, there were a law that um, under the um, Economic Ministry of Development here at, at national level, as a new law to support and a lot of um, like money subsidized and seed capital support startups and SMEs to transform their core business, their strategy through digital transformation. So the question is, which startups and, and which SMEs are ready um, to incorporate those digital tools um, to achieve their new objectives and also, and if they really made the question. Um, that this is a survival tool or not, because those that they are not adapt to the new digital uh, tools, maybe they will get out from, from the market. So that is the, the main challenge here in Argentina also, I think. Absolutely. And there have been um, studies written um, over the last few months during the pandemic, showing that obviously a lot of businesses have been hurt. And in our region, Latin America in general, has a has a huge one of the biggest gaps between the digital divide. Um, we have a percentage, very low percentage of companies that that are uh, have a digital transformation, which also means there's a big opportunity for, for that. So that 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 dives into my second question. 
um, regarding any suggestions or recommendations. This would go for Marcos first this time. What uh, any suggestions or recommendations you could share with the audience regarding doing business in the ecosystems uh, in the countries of Mercosur today or the upcoming years? We know that there's a gap, digital gap. There's a lot of space, a lot of work to be done. Uh, what, what can you tell for companies who are interested in doing business now in, in the region, in the Mercosur uh, region, Marcos? I think that um, there are a lot of skills, um, new skills that are very useful right now. Um, think global, um, be emp empathy, collaborative, because right now everybody ne need to collaborate to grow, to rethink their strategy, to rethink their business model, everything. And we have to collaborate because we don't have to uh, stay each other uh, on presence. So this virtuality allows new opportunities to um, develop new partners and develop um, new um, yes partners in order to rethink their business and grow their business. I think that the empathy, collaboration, uh, innovation, intuition, yeah, creativity has the keys to find these opportunities and to find new these new gaps that the the different markets are allowing to to get in for the startups and the SMEs here. Perfect collaboration because now we don't have to get on a, on a plane to go to Buenos Aires. You can do more collaboration virtually. Uh, Marcelo, as well, what do you what do you think would be interesting to recommend to potential? Uh, participants who, who who are interested in doing business in, in the region still um, in, in terms of next now in the next few years. And just exactly what you were saying, uh, Rafael, given that now the, the, the internet and communicating over the internet has essentially become mainstream, if you will, to a demographic that before was not really, really comfortable with uh, with uh, communicating over the internet and given the significant digitization and global outreach in Brazil and the other Mercosur countries, now is the time to take advantage of investment and doing business in Mercosur. You don't want to miss this gold rush. Um, a, few, a few years back, it could have been that many countries outside of South America were not necessarily very interested in doing business in Mercosur, particularly looking at startups and looking at that technology. But because of what uh, the positive outcome of this enabling communication, facilitating communication globally has given to us over the last two years, many countries are now looking to Mercosur as opportunities to do business. And Many countries have still been doing business. I know Canada has been doing business with Brazil throughout the pandemic. There has been no stoppage. It's, it's actually increased. And that's why I'm saying don't miss this gold rush. It's a huge opportunity. Uh, even though we're in the midst of crisis, there's always an opportunity in these crises. Point, Marcelo. Juan, anything else you, you think you can also uh, uh, share and especially with um, focusing in Uruguay, which has a strong base of technology and already had been an entry point for a lot of companies interested in doing business um, even yeah. before the pandemic. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. I think that uh, there are a few other things that I want to, to add into this perspective. One is something that uh, Marcos already mentioned somehow is, is this culture, empathy, passion that talent people from Latin America have, you know, and, and we are dreamers, you know, we, we really, we really love what we do. But for many years, we need to leave our countries, leave our regions to the north or to other countries in order to, to reach the stars, you know, and now after this pandemic and during this year, we don't need to leave anymore. We can work from anywhere and we can make a dent from anywhere, even Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, doesn't matter, you know, so it's just about the world is closer to our to our goals, to our to our dreams. So that's a very important thing in order for companies to find very passionate, talented people, creative people to work for for a mission, for a vision, global vision. It doesn't matter. You don't need to leave your countries anymore to change the world. That's that's one thing. The other thing I, I think Mercosur offers a lot of ample opportunities where technology can easily, you know, be part of it. 
I'm talking agriculture, logistics, banking, financing, you know, a lot of a lot of things where lately and especially in the last two years, technology started to disrupt in businesses that were very, very stable. So right now, if you wanna, if you wanna, especially in this world that is upcoming, you no know, sustainable, you know, uh, earth, planet, and all those kind of disciplines. Latin America needs needs to be a role model into those things and take a lead on about taking things into a next level. It's our, I mean, Brazil, Amazonia, you know what? I mean? Sustainable things, ocean. I mean, it's it's definitely something that we need to to to. So every company out there that want to do something into those categories, I think Latin America is is perfect spot for it. Thank you, Juan. Thanks for the input of all you th all three of you. And I wanted to just reinforce a point. Uh, I, I know from my own experience that in, in each of these countries we're presenting, that Uruguay, Argentina, and Brazil, there's an immense, like all of them have said, immense amount of talent, uh, preparation uh, of, of of professionals. And, and even before the pandemic, and even now for the pandemic, and moving forward, I think a lot of companies from the north, from other places, Europe as well, should look in the miracle suit to, to look for this talent. There is a lot of fantastic uh, 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 trained uh, professionals in this area of technology innovation that already existed. And, and, and this is something that will continue and it should be looked at. Latin America in general has a, a, good, a good group of, of technology, but I know these three countries specifically are very strong in preparing the professionals for, for technology-based um, uh, work, um, even outsourced, for example, or partnerships. So definitely you should look into Mercosur uh, for partnerships. In, in the in now in the coming future, our time is running out, but we definitely want to we want to keep talking, but we want to also uh, respect the, the the next panels coming up. I, we want to have one final word, um, perhaps an inspirational message uh, from each of you in terms that you can send to the startups and the businesses attending this conference. Remember that this conference we have participants from all over Canada, all over Latin America. And we're presenting different panels, and we really wanted to. We're excited about this Mercosur panel because a lot of people do look in this region a lot more as well. So, any inspirational message you could share, uh, starting with Juan this time? Yeah, I'm. You know, I, I've been saying all the time, like from ashes is where the bigger thing can happen, and uh, and I think that uh, there is a lot of opportunities out there. There is a there is there is um, uh, capital seed and there is there's easy kind of easy to find some kind of uh, investment uh there is talent out there there is this moment of humanization of technology and technology is spread it all over like a, you know so it's it's a great opportunity that reminds me to the 15th century where i read in the books you know like the renaissance renaissance all of that it's i think it's like a technology renaissance with some um, human perspective and a better world and uh, and I think that's honestly, uh, uh, it's a great, great moment for everybody who wants to set up something new or change the world uh, where we are right now. Excellent. Muchas gracias. Uh, Marcos, any final inspirational points from your, your own experience and from what your vision of, of how this is moving forward in our region? Um, going to, to the same line as Juan, I think that uh, here in Latin America, in Mercosur, Creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion, empathy, and also leadership are those schools that will not cover the technology. And I think they are truly, truly useful in this current um, moment. So in order to find new opportunities. So I think that as a region, as a Mercosur, we have an amazing opportunity to take those skills and to put in the table to find these new opportunities. Excellent. And ending also with Marcelo, um, any inputs, final inspirational words to, to the audience? Thank you, Rafael. As uh, my co-panelists Juan and Marco said, I resonate their, their comments as well. But I think we should never underestimate the ability to pivot, uh, especially when we are in a situation that we're in. Many of the successful companies are successful during this time because they pivoted and they recognize that there was a need to adapt and to adapt quickly to any situation. Every startup, if you're, if you're a startup or even a, a, an established business, you're taking a risk, you're investing in yourself, you're investing in your product and your service, 
and don't underestimate your dreams and your aspirations. I think that's critical. But also don't forget to take advantage of programs that could exist between uh, Mercosur countries and other countries. For example, uh, Canada and Brazil have an investment fund where a company from Canada and a company from Brazil can find a solution to a real life problem. And if that can be accepted, there's significant funding from both, uh, both countries. Don't underestimate those, uh, th those funding opportunities. But as I said, as, as Juan said and Marco said, let's not underestimate our dreams and let's make our dreams reality. Absolutely, Marcelo. I wish we could talk for hours with uh, Juan and Marcelo. Marcos, there's a lot of knowledge and experience in this panel. Please, we invite you to connect with each of them through LinkedIn. On the page of the conference, you will have their link of LinkedIn. You can continue the dialogue, ask them questions um, as a follow-up as well. But just to end, we want to, we're really excited. We really believe that the region is, is, is open for business. There's a lot of opportunities that, like we, we talked about. And um, yeah, we, we really invite everybody to just uh, uh, continue this dialogue, connect with us. Thank you, everyone, for the participation. Thank you, Juan, Marcelo, Marcos. Uh, it was great to have you, um, great to share your inputs. And we definitely will be building on, on this in the next few months and years together. Thank you and have a great day, everyone. The rest of the conference as well.